Good morning, sir. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How much is it to go to the uh, convention center? Seven dollars. Seven dollars? Yes, sir. Let's do that. Hey, how are you? Fine, thank you very much. Very well. Alrighty. Information for first responders is critical. Very critical. Now a local fire department has new technology. It's a short ride to the Orlando Convention Center and um, it only takes about three minutes. New technology on display right here in Orlando giving first responders information right. that could save your life. This is IWC 2018 in the city of Orlando. And I bet it's going to be a fantastic show this week. What many people don't know and what many people don't see really from, from the outside are products helping to make first responders communicate as best as possible. Here at Westel, uh, they are developing a lot of products that you probably won't see that much when you're talking about critical communications network. Tom Chamberlain from Westel. Tom, um, you know, inside North America, Westel is very well known. Yes. Outside the US, a little bit less, right? That's correct. So can you tell me what is your company doing? Okay, so uh, Westel has been around since 1980, uh, selling the telecommunications industry as a whole, um, starting out with the wireline side of the business and then expanding into uh, wireless. Um, there are three primary divisions within Westel. Um, you have your CNS division that covers uh, power distribution, uh, cabinets and enclosures, and, um, and then tower mounted amplifiers. Um, and then um, our intelligent site monitoring business, which we produce products that monitor sites, cell sites, and DAS systems um, globally. That, that area we do globally. Um, the in-building system, we acquired, well, the, the ISM system was, uh, or IS, ISM division, we had acquired Kentrox, which is pretty well known, a uh, company with a lot of history. Um, the in-building wireless division, we had acquired a company called CSI that had been manufacturing repeaters for a long time and had a line of passes in the tennis and quite a long history in public safety. And we've expanded that public safety um, product set to, uh, quite a bit in the last few years. And, and that's why we came to this show to, uh, to, to grow that business. I say the public safety without signal boosters and all of these products that you're developing uh, would not exist? Well, I think there's Is that really necessary? Absolutely. Uh, what, what happens is, you know, like an ERF, your, your RF cannot penetrate, a, it penetrates a building, but only to an extent. Because buildings are built of concrete and steel, and concrete and steel block RF. So it's become critical uh, for essential communications, emergency uh, firefighters, um, when they're going into a building, if, if there's no way for them to talk to each other, you know, you're, you're talking about a, a really critical situation where they can't get the water to where they need, they can't get the manpower to where they need, they can't get people out, um, and it's a life safety situation. So um, even though you have a, a very good extensive macro network um, all over for outside, you have to have an in-building system, and it's required and mandated in a lot of areas, and that's what we're really um, trying to um, take advantage of, that, that growth. We spend a lot of time educating people. We're members of the Safer Building Coalition, so we go in and talk to the AHJs, um, the fire marshals and integrators, and educate them about NFPA standards, NF, um, IFC standards, and how all of our products comply with that. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're designed to meet those standards. Another person within Westell Technologies is Mike Brownson. Mike, Hi. hello there. So, about the product, you have two big red boxes here. I would say these are recorders, but that's not, right? <laughs> no. No, no voice recorders. What does it do? Well, earlier Tom talked about how it's, um, in many cities, there's a mandate to bring in that public safety signal indoors. So we need a way to pick up that signal from the off-air 
amplify it many, many fold, and then rebroadcast it inside. So what these red boxes are doing is this is a bi-directional amplifier or BDA or signal booster. They're all... Yeah. It says that, right? It says that, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. we have a public safety signal booster, an NFPA compliant, that's why it's red, um, all the alarms, and it takes that outdoor signal boosts it many times. Uh, this one boosted about a billion times. Is that is that and so then, that's allowed in the USA? Absolutely. Also in other countries? That, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is a very common thing. And then it retransmits that same signal in the building, where then it's distributed via coax, uh, splitters, to antennas distributed out the building. Okay, so what's inside? Because can we take a look at what's in box. It's an this one. This one. But <laughs> inside are gonna be filters and amplifiers and control okay. circuitry to do the alarming okay. and to make sure. But one of the things that, that's unique about Westel is we include everything. So we don't have options for yeah, we have to pay extra for like oscillation detect or isolation measurements or um, frequency agility or computer GUI. We build that all in. Okay, so it's it's one package and then you go, you install it and you get everything together. And it's a very simple commissioning process. Uh, our computer interface is very intuitive. Right. Well, so what's your unique selling point about these products? I would say that we include everything at really great value. We talked about the BDA just amplifies the signal, and then it needs to be distributed throughout that building. So, Westel is also unique in that we have everything from the antenna outside to the BDA, to the battery backup, to the splitters and couplers that distribute that signal, and then to you know, a variety of antennas that are mounted up on the ceiling. So wait a minute, that's an antenna? This is an antenna. It looks like it looks like a frisbee. <laughs> All right, it's kind of, kind of interesting. To Very see. low so, profile. And, and, okay. Uh, minimal visual impact. Exactly. So yeah, that's the ideal thing. I always thought it was to close gaps, but these are antennas. Quite of interesting. Actually. So now you'll know what they are. All right. Good. All right. So, what's next? Okay. Now we have some new products. Okay, that that's that is exciting. That is exciting. Where that are they? Is Where are they? Oh, um, we have to work our way around the crowd. Okay, that's good. We have we have very good traffic today. All right, that's good. Um, okay, so again, red boxes. It's more red boxes. I know. <laughs> there's a lot of red boxes out there. All right. But we're finding that there's there's higher technology solutions to some of the problems that occur in distributed antenna systems. So what we have here. Uh, plus there's additional frequency bands that we haven't had before. For example, this red box, it's for UHF frequencies from that 400 megahertz range because some okay. public safety agencies are in that range. Exactly. So of course we need to have the products for that. The other thing we're doing, uh, some HJs are starting to mandate what are called channelized BDAs. And what they have is they have very narrow filters to pass only the channels that are used in their network. So that's what, this red box is the is a higher frequency, 700, 800 megahertz, channelized. So would I say that that's for P25, that's for Tetra? They could actually, it doesn't really matter it's whether it's yeah. analog P25 or Tetra. The BDA is really transparent okay. to what that RF format is. Okay. 